Hi, I'm Brian Mealy from University of Wyoming. Today we're going to be discussing collecting specimens for vouchering plants, either in herbarium or for your own collection. And we thought that before we go out in the field, we'd discuss a few tools that might be helpful in making your collections. One of the things that I like to carry with me is a GPS unit so that I can mark the location of the plant and go back and find it again if need be, and also for, for documentation of the plant population. A digital camera doesn't have to be anything fancy, is, is helpful in documenting the habitat from where you collected the plant and may be helpful in finding that location again. And a trowel or some other digging tool uh, to help you dig up those roots is also going to be something you might want to consider taking with you. And I'm Rachel Miller, also from the University of Wyoming. Along with the tools that Brian's discussed here, uh, a, a cooler can also be useful um, to have out in the field with you when you're collecting plants. Not only to keep your lunch with you and, and cool, um, but also to put the plant specimens in. This helps preserve your plants um, with it, when you're in the field and can't get back to your house in a timely fashion. Another thing you want to have with you is a plastic bag to stick your plant specimens in um, with a paper towel. Uh, you'll dampen that while in the field um, and then put these in the cooler to take back with you. Ready to go? Let's go. Once we find the plant that we want to collect, there are a few things we want to do before we start making our collection. I mentioned having a GPS handy so that you can make a waypoint of the plant when you get to the site. You may also want to mark on a topographic map or some other map the location of the plant if you don't have a GPS unit. Some other things that you might want to consider doing are making some notes of the surrounding vegetation and the habitat type where you collected the plant for further reference. You may also want to make note if it's a weed or a suspected weed species of the abundance of the weed and the size, the spatial distribution of that weed population uh, and this will help you make accurate documentation of the plant that you collected. Once we've recorded some site information from where we're going to make our collection, there are a few things we want to consider when actually collecting the plant itself. And that is maximizing the amount of characteristics that will help us identify the plant or help someone else identify the plant. One way we can do that when we collect a plant is to be sure to get some of the root system. This will help us determine whether or not it's an annual plant or a perennial whether there are characteristics underground like a bulb or a rhizome that might also help us distinguish the plant. Another thing about this one that we see is it's already flowering. Now flowers or fruits or seeds are really important characteristics when determining uh, which species it is that we've collected. So this would be a near optimum type of collection on this plant that we see here because we've got roots, We've got both basal leaves and leaves on the stems, and we also have flowers and some flowers that are beginning to go to fruit. So this is what I would consider to be a good collection. And as Brian just mentioned, it's important to collect as many of the plant's parts as possible. As we see with this grass species here, and why we're illustrating as a grass is because they're a little bit different than that forb that Brian just showed us. Now we can see they have root systems as well and stems. You want to make sure you get those along with the leaves. But what's different here is, is the flowering part. As we noticed on that forb, they were really showy. They have really showy flowers. Now grass species don't have near as conspicuous of those you know, flowering parts, but the seed heads are equally as important to collect um, when trying to identify that plant. Now when you go to collect a woody species, obviously you're not going to be able to get the bark or the underground, uh, the, the trunk or the underground parts, but you want to collect the, the flowering parts and the leaves as well um, to get a good identification of that woody species. So now that we've collected our plants, let's talk about how to keep them in a condition that's going to be good um, before we go to press them uh, so we can keep all our plant parts intact uh, so we can identify them properly. So going to our grass species that we collected just a little bit ago, we want to definitely make sure our roots are cleaned off and you know, with both species, our forbs, our roots are, are nice and clean. And as we talked about having a cooler handy, we bring that out with our Ziploc bag and our damp paper towel. Now the paper towel doesn't need to be so wet to where you're squeezing water out, but it needs to just have a damp feel to it. This is going to help preserve that plant. Um, 
so those parts remain fresh so they don't get all withered up. Kind of like when you put your plants on your dashboard, um, they get a shriveled look to them. So this is going to help preserve those characteristics. So we put our grass species and our forb species. Try not to get them too folded, but when we go to seal up the Ziploc bag, we don't want to seal it totally. We're going to just seal it up about halfway when we put it in our cooler. So now that we have it properly preserved and put in a cool, cool area. Now if you're only going to be out in the field for say a few minutes, um, a few hours before you get back to the house uh, for your refrigerator, um, you don't necessarily need to bring a cooler along. If you put it in that, just make sure you put it in your refrigerator as soon as you get home and you can actually keep your plants for overnight to a few days uh, before you go pressing them or, or um, identifying them. So now that we're back from the field, we're going to take the plants we collected and begin arranging them on newspaper um, to begin the process of pressing plants. There are a number of different ways to press plants. Today we're going to be using a plant press here that you see is made of slats of wood and some cardboard and straps. You can buy these or they're pretty easy to make yourself as well. If you're not going to be collecting too many plant specimens or pressing too many plants, you may just use some newspaper and heavy books to apply pressure to those plants that will be able to preserve them for a long time. So when we go to arrange our plants to be pressed, we want to make sure that root system is very visible along with the stems, leaves, and in the case of a grass, um, your seed heads uh, need to be displayed um, so, you can, so you can identify that uh, using those. With the Forbes species here, again, uh, have a, a good good specimen so uh, you can correctly I see or I clearly see the root systems the stems and the flowering parts make sure that those are visible as well now one thing to point out it's good to have both sides of your leaves showing um, this is key in some species because some have very different top sides of their leaves versus the bottom side so keeping keeping one side um, and then the other side visible is going to help you easily identify that plant now that we have our plant arranged the way that we want it to be displayed, we're ready to press it. Before I seal it up in the plant press, I include a tag with our date of collection, some of the information that we collected in the field, such as location, and the other information associated with population characteristics. Now, it'll just stay in there, and then it'll stay with that plant so that you don't get your specimens mixed up as they're pressing. So once we get our straps tightened down on our plant press and we leave this in a warm, dry place for several days, this plant will retain its identifying characteristics for years to come. And with the steps that Brian and I outlined today, you can collect a plant specimen that can be added to your own plant collection, taken to a herbarium, or taken to your local Cooperative Extension Service or County Weed and Pest Office, um, and, and they can help assist you in correctly identifying that plant. So from the University of Wyoming Cooperative Extension Service, I'm Rachel Mueller. And I'm Brian Mueller, and we hope that you get out and collect some plants and increase your knowledge of the vegetation in your local area.